Let's change a click of a button and let's explain block states once and for all. All right, we find ourselves back at IntelliJ once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to tackle a monumental task once more. And this is explaining block states and block state properties. Now we've seen block states and block state properties sort of a little bit when we talked about the pressure plates, the door, the stairs, all of the non-block blocks where we had some crazy JSON files. So if I open the JSON file for the button, for example, these are all of the block states properties on this actual block. And now how are we going to understand this for ourselves so that we might be able to use it? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to press shift twice and then we're going to put in redstone or block this one exactly. We're going to say include non-project items and we want the redstone or block here. So redstone or block, very important because this has only one Boolean property here and not much else in terms of functionality. Other blocks that have block state properties usually also have some other functionality to it, which is something that we don't want to see. We actually just want to see, okay, how does this work? How does this, you know, Boolean property actually function? And you can think about the redstone ore, right? If you have the redstone ore block in the game, it just sits there. It's, it's totally fine. But if you, for example, walk over it, it would be step on, right? Then it gets lit up. Or if you start breaking it, then it also gets lit up. So there's sort of a change in its actual state in the world. And for that, we're going to break out the actual greatest tool ever. And that's going to be some slides right here. So these slides are all available for download in the description below. And also once as like a giant cheat sheet as well, for everything put together. And I'm going to try to explain, first of all, the difference between a block state and a block. And then we're also going to go through, you know, some of the block state properties, how those work and how you can actually change them inside of the world. Okay, first of all, what is the difference between a block and a block state? So the block, you can think of that as sort of a single pattern. Now that, of course, we need to explain what a single pattern is for people who know Java already. That should be fairly self-explanatory. The idea is that when you create a block right in our mod blocks class, that is the only time we actually create that block. We are never using that class ever again somewhere else. You can create multiple blocks of the same class, but that field stays the same. That's always there. That's why it's also a final field, for example, So that never changes. There ever only exists one field that saves that particular block. And that is for us done in our mod blocks class. And for vanilla, this is done in the blocks class. Now, when it comes to block states, those are sort of instances inside of the world. And they save stuff like the block position. So where is this block located? They save block properties. So what properties does this block have? That's the thing that we pass in when we are actually creating the block. So that is also saved in the actual block states. And then also block state property, which are different from block properties. These are the things that change. So the, the powered on, the lit for the redstone ore that we've just seen, those are the block state properties. And those can change from each individual block in the world. So of course, if you have three buttons and you press one of the buttons, then the block state property changes and not the block property. If the block property would change, all three buttons would change. Basically, all buttons in the entire world would change. You can think of it as that. And that is the idea of an instance, basically. It just means that, yeah, all three of those are buttons, but they're different buttons. So that's the idea. And as you can see, they are saved by the world and they can only be changed by the world. So if you call state with some parameters, then the actual block state in the world is going to change. Now let's actually see what the block state properties itself have to offer. So this is the idea. So I also put a subtitle here for how to store data in blocks. More or less, it's, it's a little more complicated than that. But let's just take a look at the redstone ore block once again. So this is basically what is written in there. I'm going to show you that in Fabric, this is written a little bit differently. But this is the idea to have a public static final Boolean property called lit. And that is set to redstone torch block dot lit. So you can also create your own custom block state properties as well. This always, however, happens in your block class. In our case, in our custom block classes, and it should always happen here at the top, sort of like this. Then you always need to override the append properties method right here. And you need to pass in your one or multiple block states into the builder.add method right here. So that's very, very important. So there's a few things that are interesting as well. A property always has a value, so it can't be null. You don't quite know what that means. 
first of all, definitely should brush up a little bit on that Java knowledge. And second of all, it simply means that, for example, for the Boolean property, it can either be false or true. There's nothing in between. That's, that's the only two values that it can take. And a block can have multiple different block state properties. There's no issue whatsoever. We've seen that with the button. We've seen that with the door, a lot of other blocks as well. And then those block state properties are used to refer to different models inside of the block states JSON file for the block. So for example, any stairs block states JSON file has multiple different questions there more or less. So if we just uh, ch quickly change over here, just for the sake of argument, and I'm going to show you the stairs, you can see it's saying, hey, facing east, half bottom, and then a shape inner left. Then we're going to use this model with this rotation and even some UV lock. So that's sort of the idea here that you can basically refer to different models, even with multiple different block state properties. And here's one of the examples, right? This is the lit equals false redstone or block. And this is the lit equals true redstone or block. What's very important is that the actual particles here are not part of the Boolean property per se. They're actually being spawned in a little bit of a different way. But I will show you that also in just a moment when we take another look at the redstone or block class. Let's also take a look at how you can actually change the block states. So you change the block states by calling world. So you need to be somewhere where you have access to the actual world variable. And then we call the set block state method with a particular position. So this changes the block state. Like I said, happens in the world. This is usually the server world, by the way. And that then changes it at a particular block state. So this is the first parameter here, the position. So, and the second parameter is the new state at that block position. So this state here is the old state, for example, that we just right clicked. And then we're going to say, okay, take this state with this property and set it to this value. And then we're going to return it. And then at the end here, the third parameter is a flag, which changes some updating behavior. It's not too crazy. Usually you want to just put in block notify all. This notifies all of the neighbors and it also updates everything totally fine. So this is usually what you want to take. It's, um, you know, there's some math behind it as well. We'll not worry about that too much. But if you were to then call this at the correct position, then this lit equals false because we are putting in true here would turn into lit equals true. Right, and now we find ourselves back in redstone or block class. And let's think about this for a second. So what we've seen is, well, we can use the world dot send block pass, as you can see right here. So the light method in this case actually does this. You can see if the state is not already lit, then we're going to set this to lit basically, and then notifying all. And then the spawn particles method is called as well. So the spawn particles method is a, a little bit of a different thing. So this basically spawns the particles here. And it also does that randomly on the display tick. So while the actual property is true, we're also continuously spawning some particles in here as well. Right, like I've said, this looks a little bit different than how I've done it. So the lit is actually being set in this static here. This is not really that different from setting it at the top here as well. Just wanted to mention that, that it looks a little bit different in the class than I put it in the basically the cheat sheet, but that's not to worry. It's it's basically the same thing. Right, apart from that, I actually think we're now ready to make our own block with some custom block state properties. So inside of our custom package, right click new Java class called the test block, because at the end of the day, this is just a test block, which is going to extend the block class. Of course, making sure that we choose the correct one in net Minecraft block block and then we'll create a constructor matching super and then we will create the first thing which is going to be a private actually let's make this public that's better public static final and this is a boolean property called clicked and we're going to set this equal to boolean property of clicked so this is actually how easy it can be to create your own custom boolean property or any property really the middle mouse button click on property here and then go to the property here. You can see that if I press Control H now, you can see there are Boolean properties. There are int properties. So those are integers. This is just any integer basically. And then enum properties where you have some set defined basically values that you can take in the direction case. This is north, east, south and west, for example. Right. And what else do we need? Well, we think back. We also need the append properties method right here. And here we want to call the builder.add and then just pass in the property. Now, what's very important, if you have multiple properties, you need to pass all of them in here as well. 
And what you can do is you can just change them with a comma and then a new property and so on and so forth until all of your properties have been added to the builder. So one more thing we're going to do is inside of the constructor, we're going to say this dot set default state. And then we're going to say this dot get default state dot with clicked equals false. So this is literally just making sure that whatever the actual default state of this is actually going to be false. Just making sure that the click property has not been set to true. And then on right click, we're going to change this. So we're going to overwrite the on use method here. And what the first thing we need to check here is, of course, if we're on the client. So we actually don't want to be on the client. So if not world dot is client, right? So making sure that we are not on the client in this case. And then we will also make sure that the hand is equal to hand dot main hand, just so that we don't call this twice. And what we're then going to do is we're first going to read out the current state of the actual block that was right clicked. So we can say boolean current state is equal to state dot get and the get takes in a property and it returns a T. So this is, of course, a boolean property. So we're going to get a boolean back. So this is why this works. Also, we can actually I believe we can also save this as a boolean like this. This would also work and it does. And then let's set the position to the actual opposite of what we've just read. So if this was not clicked, then we're right clicking it and we're changing it to clicked is true. And otherwise we're gonna change it to clicked false. So let's say world set block state. So as you can see this one at a particular position. Now, luckily the position is given to us right here. So we can just say position and then state dot width. And then we're gonna say clicked. And then we're gonna say the opposite of the current state. And then we wanna call block dot notify all. Which is going to be a which is basically a three we won't worry about this there is some actual explanation here as well which you can of course take a look at but it is not quite necessary right and this is going to well basically act sort of as a switch so we can right click and then it's going to be clicked true and then we can right click again and it's going to be clicked false and what we're going to do is we're going to define a custom block states json as well so we're just going to copy over the Ruby block for the time being. This is the test underscore block. We of course, also need to still register it, but we'll do that in just a moment. So if we have a clicked equals false, then we want, let's just say, for example, test underscore block underscore normal. So we want to refer to the normal block model. And then if this is not the case, let's just duplicate it and add a comma here. And then we're going to say clicked true. Then what we want to do is we want to refer to the test block underscore clicked. This now refers to two different models depending on the block state property. Now let's also register it just so that we have that. So let's just copy over the uh, trap door here. And this is going to be the test underscore block. And of course, once again here as well, test underscore a block. And this is equal to a new uh, test block, which in this case actually is non-opaque. And the rest actually is totally fine. So we can keep it like this. Now we just need to add the block models as well. So those, of course, are actually normal block models in this case. So test block. And this is then the test underscore block, and which is going to be normal, actually. That's correct. So this is actually going to be renamed. Sorry, right click uh, refactor rename. So this is test block underscore normal. And then let's duplicate uh, this one. And then we also have a test underscore blocked underscore clicked, which now refers to the test underscore clicked right those are of course just two different textures here which we'll add as well those are of course also available along with everything that i've mentioned the cheat sheet and all of that in the description below in gists or in the github repository as well and let's also add the item model because that's just makes sense let's actually copy the ruby block and this is going to be the test underscore block in this case then just refers to test block in this case, normal, so that is always going to look like the normal block there. And then last but not least, let's also add the translation here, just so that we have it. So this is the test underscore block. And then we can say this is the test block. There you go. And now after all of those things have been added, and hopefully the block states have been understood, let's see if it works. All right, we found ourselves back in Minecraft. As you can see, the test block has been added and I can set it down. As you can see, it's a question mark at the moment. Now, what happens if I right click it? Well, it turns into an exclamation mark because of course now this block state here has been changed from clicked false to clicked true. And if I right click again, then it's going to change back to clicked 
false. And I can do this, well, with either or any of them. I mean, whatever I want, I can just right click basically to my heart's content and everything is just going to work in this case. Now, if I have everything set up in terms of loot table, then usually this block should drop because normally you only have a certain default block state. This is, of course, what is returned by the default block state when you call that on a block. And that is usually the one that you have when you set it down. So, of course, when you, for example, have a redstone ore block and you set it down, it usually sets it down without it being lit up right? That's that's not quite how that works, right? So it usually sets it down without being lit up. Now, if I actually right click on it, then usually it also gets turned on. I believe that that is just a feature on the right click, as you can see. So that is something that to be aware about, basically. But I hope that this sort of has helped you understand, okay, how does how do block states work? How do they relate to each other? And how you can change them? Right, so this was a little bit of a different tutorial right here. Once again, the cheat sheet is available in the description below. Usually, I think this cheat sheet is very much sort of a thing that you need to take a look at while watching the video, probably. You might even need to watch it another time just because the block properties I can understand, the, they can be very complicated at first glance. You know, why can't we just add a normal field to it? Well, it doesn't work, just like I said, because this block class, these block classes are sort of used as singletons. So this is why we need to use the block states and the block state properties in that case. But I'm sure you will manage. Right, and that would be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would, of course, appreciate a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. So, yeah.